Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me uh, this afternoon uh, for that session on how to keep hundreds of code repositories consistent and staying sane. Because when you have that many repositories, there are many opportunities where this can happen. All right. So nobody wants to be like this. Uh, I'm not like this, uh, and I'll explain. I'll give you. Uh, I'll explain how with two simple tools, I avoid to be in that uh, state. So who am I? Uh, so uh, Vincent Fuchs, uh, I've been working for 15 years uh, in the industry, uh, 13 uh, with the Société Générale, so we are a French uh, bank uh, in India for the past 16, 17 years now. Uh, we're hiring, uh, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so I've uh, been working in Paris, New York and Bangalore for the fa past five years. Uh, I had uh, several kinds of roles uh, during my career, from support to dev to uh, tech lead, tech coach, and technical architect uh, these past uh, few years. Um, I've been using open source since the, the beginning. Uh, what has changed for me over the past two years is that now I've uh, started uh, contributing uh, back, so we'll see uh, why this is important. Um, the, what I'm focusing in on uh, these days, it's uh, well, things on microservices. It's a buzzword, everybody is doing it, so I'm doing it also. Uh, but more on the other aspects uh, around monitoring and dev efficiency. How do we uh, work uh, smartly uh, and uh, don't waste time doing uh, things that, uh, that brings uh, no, no value, okay? So uh, for this, well, you know, developers, we like to have uh, tools. So I'm going to present you two more tools uh, today. When we do microservices, uh, we like having tools. So we have so many problems. We have one problem per, per tool, uh, one tool per problem, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, for API Gateway, most of, I mean, when you're in the Java world, uh, often you use Azul, console for uh, service discovery, monitoring, we use uh, the Elastic Stack, et cetera, et cetera. This graph for, so it's a dependency graph of uh, services. Uh, provided by, by Zipkin, so if your services are enabled with Zipkin, Zipkin you get this for free. Uh, it can be very useful, but there's no tool right now, not that I know of, uh, about the code repositories, okay? Uh, this is our GitHub organization in my, uh, in my team. With the, um, so I work with uh, three teams uh, in Bangalore and they work on the same platform as four other teams in Paris. So let's say seven teams total. Uh, we have 430 repositories, okay? Uh, so it's a bit of everything. Uh, see, there's some backend code, some UI, some configuration code, some documentation, some libraries, some stuff that is deprecated but we want to keep. Uh, it's like on the picture, the, all these plans, some of them are very similar, some of them are very different. Well, that's what we want, right? With microservices, we are supposed to be uh, able to do uh, something in Java, in Node, in uh, Python, and uh, you know, well, yes, it's on paper, it's nice. Managing this can become a challenge, so that's why uh, most, uh, quite often we actually need a bit of consistency uh, between all of this, okay? Uh, so why, why is it a, a problem? Well, typically, um, okay, imagine there is a, a, a vulnerability reported on one library today, and you know you're using it somewhere. How many, but where? You, you've seen it once, you don't remember where. And probably you've seen it many times. So out of 430 repository, how quickly can you find uh, that uh, we, in which repository you use that version of that uh, library, okay? That's one. Then once you have identified all these places, let's say you find it in 30 places, you need to upgrade it. So what do you do? 30 times, tuck, 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 commit, push, uh, no. So I'll show you today two, uh, two tools to that uh, help with that. So the first is GitHub, we've called it GitHub crawler. So it gives you an accurate reporting on all your repositories, okay? So it's like a batch, you run it, and uh, you get the data you, you need, all right? Uh, I'll, so I'll give a quick demo of uh, all this uh, after. Uh, second is uh, called CI Droid, so where we automate the uh, low value maintenance task, uh, low value but still required, okay? And we don't pay our developers to do uh, that kind of uh, you know, uh, boring things. Uh, we want them to uh, produce uh, value. So uh, that's why we had a problem. 
And in the true DevOps style, we, there was no tool, so we created these tools. All right? So let's start with a GitHub crawler. So that represents exactly what I was saying. You know the information is there somewhere. You don't know where it is, so you need help for this. Okay? So very quickly, uh, a quick uh, a demo. So, um, so like I said, it's a batch. I can configure the output. Here I've configured the output so that uh, it pushes the data into Elasticsearch. So then you just have to put Kibana on Elasticsearch, on top of Elasticsearch, and you can browse uh, the data very easily, okay? So here it's over seven days, so you see it's running uh, every day. So these are the, this is my data for each day of the week. So if I focus on, on one, here, okay. So I have then my indicators here, so these are, Big enough, yes. Okay, so here it's more important the, the repository name. And here I have my, the indicators that I want to display. So the Spring Boot startup parent version, for example, the number of branches for each repository, the number of Maven modules, okay? May not be relevant for you, but for me it's important. So I've configured it that way, and it's very easy to configure for various uh, things. Here I have the list of other indicators that I have configured, but I'm not displaying. So if I want to know, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, what can we check for? Uh, the Jacoco version, the Docker image uh, that, uh, that is used for all of these repositories, I have the information here. If I need it again tomorrow, I don't need to ask anyone, I'll just come here and get accurate data. No matter what my developers tell me, yeah, I've done it. Uh, ah, but I forgot to commit. Uh, yeah, that happens. Uh, here, that's the uh, source of truth on the repository. And uh, because it's um, because it's uh, in the Kibana, then here it's the raw data, but you can do any kind of graphics and dashboarding uh, if uh, if that uh, if that's important uh, for you. Okay, so that was just the, the a quick demo of the output of GitHub crawler. Um, how does it work? Uh, so, yes, okay. Uh, so, simple uh, config file, you give the GitHub organization name, which files you want to pass, which indicators and how you're going to pass the, the find them in the file, and what kind of reporting uh, you, you want. So, you give that uh, config file to, uh, to the batch, so it's a Spring Boot uh, 2 application written in Kotlin. And it starts from the top, the organization level, and then, okay, from the organization, I get all the repositories. From the repositories, I know which files I'm interested in. I'm going to take them, pass them, etc. And then I'm giving a reporting per repository, per branch, and I push that data. Here, I push it in Elasticsearch, but I can write it in a file. I can uh, save it in database. I can do uh, whatever I want. Um, so the typical config, uh, quickly, uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, so we have uh, our internal uh, GitHub Enterprise uh, instance, but uh, that would work also on uh, GitHub.com. Organization name, the OAuth token if you want to pass uh, things that are private. Uh, so that's where you configure the indicators. So under the indicators to fetch by file. So here I'm saying in my uh, pom.xml, that work? No, that doesn't work. Okay. In the pom.xml, uh, I want to find my uh, Java version, and I indicate uh, the, the regex that I can use to find it. Uh, there are other other parsers to find a dependency version in a in a in a pom.xml. Uh, there are some uh, XPath expression to find the values that uh, that you want. Okay, you can say, uh, mention several files. So here I have a pom.xml, a Docker file, uh, a circle CI uh, config uh, YAML file. There are several parsers that come out of the box. You can add your own very easily to be able to find the right uh, information that uh, you're interested in. Oops, sorry. Uh, here, so th this was parsing the, the files, and here it's uh, the miscellaneous repository tasks. Sometimes you want uh, some information on all your repositories, but it's not in files, uh, like the number of branches, number of open pull requests. If you want to track this uh, at scale, I would say it's it's easy. You just need to configure it, and it works. Okay. Uh, second tool, CI Droid. So uh, it takes care of the things that nobody wants to do. So uh, some examples: automatic rebase uh, of unmergeable pull requests. So uh, that's a problem we faced. 
it happens that you have several pull, your pull request doesn't get merged immediately. It stays here for maybe a few days. Uh, it was green at the time where you created it, but some other people have pushed code in uh, the master branch. Okay, uh, the, then your pull request is not up to date anymore. So it's still green, but it's not up to date anymore. So you can configure your GitHub to prevent the merging, etc. But one of the best things that developers would have to do, ideally, is to rebase their, their branch on top of master to make sure that their branch and their pull request is up to date. Here, every time there is a push on master, CIDroid will be notified and will take all the open pull requests and rebase them automatically. Similar use case, the notification on non-mergeable pull requests. That's uh, something that is missing, I feel, in GitHub, is that when you create a pull request and that somebody uh, pushes some code in master, and for some reason your pull request becomes not mergeable anymore, nobody tells you. There's no, there's no notification system. So you believe your pull request is ready to be merged, that somebody will look at it and it will be merged soon. And when the, the reviewer comes, like, what is this? Well, how do you want me to review that pull request? It's not even mergeable. So it sends it back to you, you fix it, and then it comes back, and, and you've wasted uh, one day, okay? So here, uh, same, CIDRAID is going to put another, uh, a comment on the pull request, so the developer gets the notification saying, hey, you, you'd better look at it, because nobody's going to merge it in that uh, state. Uh, last one, uh, the PR analysis. Uh, so we get notifications about uh, the pull request event, so it's fairly easy. Uh, I, I, we don't do it in detail, but to... Uh, to perform some additional checks on the pull request. If uh, Sonar and your static analysis uh, doesn't uh, provide you the, the checks that, uh, that you want, you can easily, it, it's, uh, you can plug some custom uh, checks here. And again, put comments in the, in the pull request. So fast feedback to the developer. How does it work? So I was saying CIDRAID gets notified. Uh, actually, I don't know if all of you are aware, but when developers use GitHub, Everything is then uh, converted into an event. Uh, every time you commit, every time you create a branch, uh, a pull request, uh, anything, it's an event. Then you can go to GitHub and say, these types of events, please send them to this endpoint. That endpoint, it's simply a webhook. So all you need to do is create a controller that is going to receive that, uh, that payload. So that's what we do here with that shared read webhook. It takes the, takes the event and forwards it uh, through RabbitMQ uh, to, uh, to some task consumer so that it gets processed uh, asynchronously. Rebasing uh, a pull request, it may, take, it may take a few seconds, so it, uh, you don't want this to be blocking here at that level. So we, uh, we process it uh, asynchronously uh, on the task consumer. Okay, then we got an idea. We thought, what if we connected both, all right? Uh, we have on one side GitHub crawler that collects data, and on the other side, we have CIDRAID that performs uh, actions on repository. So uh, can we find a way to, uh, you know, pipe the output of one to, uh, to the input of the other? Maybe we can uh, save a lot of time here uh, also. So we, all we had to do is actually create a new controller, here, that takes a specific payload in which we describe the type of change we want to do, where we want to do it, so in uh, 10, 50, 100 places, uh, uh, how we want to do it, do we want to do a push or do we want to create a branch and a pull request that will be reviewed. That's it. Send that payload to the controller. Uh, so, so let's say we want to upgrade a version in 50 uh, repositories. We send one payload. This guy is going to split the payload in 50 messages that are going to be processed asynchronously in, uh, by the task consumer. So this way, and the record, I think we've done it recently, uh, 44 changes, uh, it was an upgrade of version, 44 changes with the pull request that gets built, 44 changes done in 32 seconds, okay? Try to do it manually. I mean, you give that task to your team. Okay, we have 44 of these, 44 changes to do. I mean, if you put somebody uh, full time on it, okay, uh, maybe uh, a couple of hours it will be done. If you just uh, don't give a, a clear objective, it's going to take weeks to be done because nobody wants to do it. Okay, so uh, I'll give you a quick, uh, a quick demo. Well, this is what it looks like. 
Yes. Oh yeah, so, so, so I mean, Circle CI, Circle CI is a, is a build uh, is a build tool. I mean, it's uh, uh, available uh, online where for free for open source project. It's going to build your your code. Here, CI Droid, it's our own uh, tool. Uh, we call it CI Droid because it's the Droid for continuous integration, uh, and we got the idea when the last Star Wars was out, so uh, it came it came like that. Um, so. Uh, so this is the UI. The UI is uh, brand new from last week. Um, so basically what we want to do, we have that repository here. Uh, you see with uh, three branches, it's a simple example, but three branches, branch one, two, three, and in it we have a file called test file three, okay? And we have dummy commits, dummy commits, etc. We have it on the three, the three branches. Okay, and branch three the same. So what if I want to update these three files in uh, three branches? So it's, uh, I just have to fill the form here. So I'll take my token because it's going to commit on my behalf, right? So I'll get an email notification. Oops. Then I have to say which action I want to perform. So I'll do a simple replace. I have dummy commits, and now I want to have smart commits, okay? How I want to do it? Do I want to create a pull request or uh, a push? Here we'll, we'll do it sim simply. Uh, getting a smart uh, commits. Uh, so we'll do a, simple, a single uh, push. And where do I want to do it? So here I just have to find a, a CSV file in which I've indicated the repository, the file, and the branch. So for all these resources, CI Droid is going to uh, take the file, try to replace, push it back to the repository. Okay? Any repository, any file, any branch. Okay? It will, it will try. If it doesn't find anything, nothing will happen. You'll get a notification that nothing happened. Uh, and uh, otherwise, it will it will do it. So here we do it for three resources. But imagine you have uh, 50 or 100. It works pretty much the same. Huh? Uh, so here, if we go back to the repository, hopefully, okay. You see, we got three commits. And here, if I see, right, 19 seconds ago. And now we have smart commits, okay? And if I go in history, it's all tracked. I have my commit message performed on behalf of uh, myself by CI Droid. So here also in the history, I know if it was CI Droid or somebody uh, else doing it. We want to make sure that it's clear so that in case of problem, it's, uh, it's all tracked, okay? So um, I showed it quickly, but the actions that we currently have is in stock. Uh, or these are out of the box. You get uh, you get these. So some things that are regex based, uh, something that are more towards XML. Uh, we use Java and Maven, so a lot of things around uh, you know adding a dependency, removing a dependency, uh, that kind of things. Uh, it comes uh, out of the box. It was in the in the combo box. Okay. Now, if you're not finding what you're looking for, whether it's in GitHub or in CI Droid, well, you can very easily implement it. You can very share it, very easily share it, because all this is actually open source. So if you want to contribute, this is where it happens. GitHub crawler, CI Droid. We have a few other things also that uh, you can uh, have a look at uh, if you want. But everything is actually available uh, here. Okay, github.com slash stage All right, thank you. That's all for me. Uh, so I hope that was useful. So I presented you the, these two tools. So ju just quickly, who manages more than 50 repositories? Okay, 100, more than 100. Ah, see, okay, how many? Ah, 300, okay, see, we're, we're friends, 400. Huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so 
They have, uh, so yeah, GitHub last year started with uh, their robot uh, things. So they, they came out at the, at the more or less the same time we were having the first version of this. And actually we spoke with the guys from GitHub and they said, oh, yeah, good idea what, you, what you've done. You should make it a, a robot or probot, uh, they, they call it. Only problem is that uh, I've implemented everything in Java and uh, Kotlin for, for GitHub crawler. And uh, the probot thing, it has to be written in, uh, in Node. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, so, so uh, well, we use GitHub. So uh, it's only for GitHub. But actually, uh, the the way the code is designed, um, it, we follow hexagonal architecture, meaning that actually, the the fact that it is uh, that you interact with GitHub, it's one dependency, and it could be replaced with the equivalent to interact with uh, GitLab. So I don't know GitLab very well, but they, they probably have the same concepts of uh, you know uh, everything for request and all. So we we all uh, all we do is interacting with the GitHub API. So GitLab probably has an API also. So I would say that the, there's probably just one class in the code to uh, replace. Uh, no, I mean, so we have, a, for GitHub crawler, we have a list of uh, parsers. So th there's one parser that is find dependency in pom.xml. So any dependency, because you know the structure of a, a, a pom file, right? It's always uh, the same. Actually, it's even a bit smarter because the version, pretty often people declare it in the properties. So if it finds that there's a, in the dependencies, if it finds that it's a variable, the parser will actually go check the value in the in the properties. So uh, whether the the version is hard coded or defined as a property, it will find. Time. Right. Thank you.